Hey there, thank you for clicking to watch this tutorial on Universal Motor Driver. Please hit the like button now and subscribe to SimTech channel. If you have already done so, I thank you so very much for supporting SimTech channel. This is highly appreciated. This is tutorial 2 from the previous tutorial. Now in this tutorial we will be doing the circuit, the, re the redesign of the circuit basically and the PCB layout, okay, for the redesign of our universal motor driver. Now, please stick around to see how we're going to do it. Now, what you see in front of your screen is what we discussed on our previous tutorial. This is a motor driver for our universal motor as shown below. Now, as you can see, this PCB is not in a very good state. They are using a strip board. We explained in the previous tutorial that we're going to redesign this circuit and make a PCB layout to make a much neater circuit that will be much safer to operate. And we went ahead also, we demonstrated and we demonstrated the working of this old motor driver. We connected it to our universal motor and we saw how it was operating but before we go into uh, reviewing our circuit and starting the PCB layout I'd like to briefly mention a few basics of universal motor as we can see in this picture here taken from uh, Wikipedia website so what is a universal motor now a universal motor okay as we can see here, yeah, this is a universal motor circuit. Now, this is a special type of motor which is designed to either operate on DC or AC supply at approximately the same speed and output power. So if you put in 200 volt AC or 200 volt DC, you're going to have approximately the same speed and the power on this shaft here is basically going to be the same. Now, the universal motor as shown here is a series 1 motor. And this is why it has a high starting torque and a variable speed characteristics. That variable speed characteristics is the one we're taking advantage on to uh, design uh, motor drivers so that we can control the speed. Now, it's also important to note that the DC series motor now, why is it series? Because you can see that the field, okay, the field is in series with the armature. That's the reason why it's called the DC series motor. Now, a, the universal motor which operates both on AC DC, as we just said now, is based on a DC series motor, which have a few drawbacks when operating on AC source. Now, remember, the universal motor here can operate either on ac or dc but when you operate it on ac there is a few problems that emerge some of which is the poor efficiency now the poor efficiency is caused due to hysteresis and eddy current losses now the eddy current and the hysteresis losses are as a result of the armature rotating inside the magnetic field so that is one point. One of the other drawback is the low power factor. Now remember, this motor here, this element is very inductive. Now because it's highly inductive and if you run it on the AC circuit, AC signal, you're going to have a high inductive reactance that is created. Okay? And that inductive reactance comes from the field winding and the armature winding and they also cause a low power factor one more thing is the sparking sparking is caused here on the brushes when running this universal motor on ac signal you're going to have sparking as the motor is running or even starting so but because people wanted to use this universal motor for both ac and dc so some few tune in were done to minimize some of those drawbacks so that the motor can run 
uh, can have a smooth operation when operating with the AC signal. Some of those fine tune also include uh, laminating, okay, laminating the field structures so that you can minimize the losses due to that spinning of the armature uh, in inside the magnetic field, okay. Now, in order to reduce that power factor, obviously, you need to reduce the inductive reactance. But how do you reduce an inductive reactance? Now, that is clearly simple. You have to reduce the copper. The, you have to reduce the resistance, okay? So, you have to reduce the resistance in these field windings and the armature windings. And how do you do that? You do that by either decreasing the number of turn so you can decrease the number of turn or you can use very thick uh, copper wires as you can see these wires they are very thick and that also will reduce the inductive reactance and have an improvement on the power factor now coming back to our topic the universal motor that we're talking about here now the construction of the universal motor is very very similar to one of the DC series. However, the whole magnetic field structures is laminated to reduce the eddy current and hysteresis losses. The armature here is of one type with commutator here and uh, commutator here and brushes to the one similar of a DC motor, a very small DC motor, as we can see here. Now, to cut a story short, because this tutorial is not about the theory of a universal motor, this was just a brief discussion about it. So, I'm just going to mention a few things on its characteristics. So, the torque is inversely proportional. So, the torque that you get from the shaft here is inversely proportional to the speed and directly proportional to the current. Okay? So, the torque inversely proportional to the speed. So, basically, the higher the speed, the less the torque it has. So the, the slower the speed, the higher the torque it has. Okay. And the other factor is when more current flows at high speed, torque increases as the magnetic flux density also will increase. And when we go on low speed, it tends to cause a magnetic saturations and that magnetic saturations deteriorate the characteristics of the motor. So this is why it's always important that the motor run at a good constant speed. Now in domestic applications, electric motor, they have the ability to be used in washing machines and every other thing. And you can also control the speed. Okay. So there are two types of control method that are used to control the speed of this universal motor. So that is the one phase angle control and the two chopper control. Now the one phase angle control is the one we are using in this tutorial because we're using a trier control. So the trier control is basically just controlling the angle for the, the for the for the AC signal, okay? Because we're using it for the AC control. So the trier will be controlling the phase of the AC signal thereby controlling the speed because it's reducing the input power to the motor so that basically what uh the the, the one phase angle control uh is about the phase angle control is the simplest and the most cost effective so without wasting any more time in this theory because this is not about the universal motor theory so let's go ahead and see how we can improve our circuit and redesign our PCB layout.